Now, believe it or not, a question I get a lot of the times on my carburetor videos, is that made out of wood? Uh, pretty much, kind of, sort of, yeah. The carburetor spacer. It's probably one of the first modifications we've ever done, you know, when we were starting out. You know, you slap a spacer on here, it makes you feel good, right? And, truth be told, some combinations really like the spacers. I mean, you can gain quite a bit of power just by, you know, putting one of these guys on here. But they come in many shapes and sizes, right? I mean, they got little skinny guys like this. They got thicker guys like this. They got aluminum. They got this wood composite right here, right? So, I mean, the endless amounts of possibilities are... Endless. That might leave a guy kind of confused on where to start and what one he should even try, right? Okay, well here's just going to be a few key, you know, rules of thumb. Now granted, every rule of thumb has a contradiction to it, right? I mean, there's always going to be a combination that goes against the rule of thumb. That's you know, just the way how it goes. So don't take these as gospel. Just take them as, like, you know, oh, well, you know, kind of similar combination of what he's talking about. Maybe I'll try that one. Okay? Okay? Good. All right. Disclaimer over. Generally, there's three different types of spacers that you got to worry about. You got the four hole, which gets its name because it's got four holes in it. Okay? Then you have the open spacer, which I don't actually have one anymore. I, I used to have one, but it's gone. So here's a picture of it. See that? Yeah, it's pretty neat. It gets its name because it's... Well, it doesn't have four holes. That's why it's got that name. It's only one hole, really. Should be called the one-hole spacer. Then you have probably the king of them all the tapered combo which is an open on the bottom and a four hole on top see that best of both worlds right there okay okay now i'm sure you noticed you got different materials too there's aluminum there's this kind of wood laminated resin composite right and then you got phenolic resin and you know plastics and stuff like that now, really, the aluminum is kind of the most common, was the most common, but it transfers heat. See, the name of the game, you want the carburetor nice and cool. You don't want all the heat building up here to make its way heat soak the carburetor. So aluminum is pretty terrible for that. Wood and the other composite stuff, pretty good for that. So that's insulation is why they make uh, different materials. Here comes the rule of thumb part. Depending on your intake manifold, whether it being a dual plane or a single plane, dual planes, generally speaking, like an open spacer. Okay? Especially if you have one that does not have this divider milled out, this divider just solid, likes an open spacer. That's generally speaking their jam. Now, if you had a single plane, generally speaking, they'll go for either an open or tend to like the four hole better. So that's kind of the rules of thumb. Single plane, four hole. Dual plane, open. Or for both of them, the tapered combo works on either. Tapered combo really is kind of the king of the crop here when it comes to carburetor spacers. And let me tell you why. Now if we flip this carburetor over, as we can see, this is what the intake manifold is seeing, right? You got the divider right down the center, but this is kind of what the intake manifold is looking at. As the air comes rushing out of here, all of this is dead area right? Because the air is whizzing by that. 
you, you don't want the air to try to make a curve to fill this area. Okay. Now, when you put a spacer on it, you put a four hole, you're not fixing that. All you're doing is you're lengthening this area right here. All of this still is dead area. Same thing with an open dead area. Now what the tapered combo spacer does is it takes that dead area and it removes it, right? Because what that dead area is, is just turbulence. I mean, this is not flow. This is all just turbulent air, just kind of getting battered back and forth between all these holes, okay? So what you're doing by smoothing that out, okay, you're smoothing out the airflow, the air direction, you're eliminating all those dead spots, making even flow. And we all know flow matters when it comes to making horsepower. I mean, anybody who's ever ported a set of cylinder heads, you know, even competently, knows every little bit of shaving and, you know, everything you do inside that port makes a difference one way or the other. I mean, that, smoothing that out, makes a pretty good difference. Every little bit helps. You know, you take, you smooth that area out right there. You smooth out a few other areas. You smooth out the entry into the carburetor itself. You smooth out the entry into the uh, Venturi. I mean, you even smooth out this area right here. It all adds up. But there is one big, big downside to the tapered combo spacer I haven't mentioned yet. They're expensive. Holy buckets. It's like, right, I mean, they know what they got because they charge a premium for them, which is absurd, ridiculous, really. I mean, to be honest, you could probably make your own out of wood for pennies on the dollar. Or even if you just have an aluminum, like two inch or one inch, right, four hole, you can grind out the bottom, make your own tapered spacer. Because the prices are pretty outrageous. I mean, come on! Look at that. There, there's no way, right? No, no. That's more like it. That, see, I'd pay that, and I'd make my own that. I'd turn that into that for way less money. Well, that's about it for carburetor spacers. It's a trial and error kind of game. You know, you gotta... Put some on, you see how the car reacts, you know, mix and match, stack ones on top of each other. It, it you know, nobody can tell you exactly what to use for your combination. You just got to figure out what it likes. So, not a tutorial, just, a, you know, rules of thumb, right? All right, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>